I haven't seen you for ages. I am going your way. Can I lift you? Oh, yes, I'd love it. The Dexter building. Marvin, the Dexter building. Kendall, will you please lend to me ten dollars? Oh, Jose, you didn't make it. No, she's not going to marry me, and I am not going to marry her. It sounds as if the marriage is off. Very off. I just, this moment, come from saying goodbye to her. And five million dollars. Six. And she was very lovely, too. She did not make me walk home. Well, what happened, according to you? According to me, she said, she said, if we get married, we spoil our beautiful friendship. Senor Don Jose Antonio Francisco de Fragosa de Fraganza, you are a liar. You said that to her. You said that to me four years ago. <laughs> yes. But I cannot tell a young lady who, to whom I have made love that uh, I have caught a cold and defeat. Oh, Jose, you'll never marry any of those rich lollipops. Your heart isn't in your work. And your hot candle is in your work, yes? Yeah. Every good secretary is in love with her boss. Has to be to put up with a businessman. Your Mr. Dexter is a nasty fellow? No, no. Stephen's a good egg. You must come up and meet him sometime. I would not like him. Well, I don't know. He might not be so wild about you. Oh, he's made up his own cement. He's near to you for years. And what does he do? Makes more cement. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jose. Stephen's no woman hater. He has his mad moments every spring. They're sudden, violent, serious while they last. Oh, soon run their course, and his temperature drops to normal again until the next attack. Oh, but that is not love. That is her fever. <laughs> well, they're uh, about the same thing. He seems to catch it from blondes. Is uh, he ill now? Oh, no. No. He's been immune since last spring. But I never know when he's going to show symptoms of a relapse. You're the sort of man who was born with a flower in his buttonhole. But when Stephen Dexter shows up in a flower, spring is here. And he's about to break out again. And when he starts to hum, Anita, Juanita, yada, yada, yada. He's gone. He's a sick man. I still do not like him. The big stiff. How dare he hum, hum at the blonde when he can hum at you? <laughs> oh, well, uh, he did want to me a little bit the first spring I worked for him. But I put him in his place. Uh-huh. A good opening move. No. No, bad. He stayed there. Oh, here we are. Keep in touch. Morning, Miss Collins. How's little Gloria? Fine, thanks, Miss Browning. This morning she killed her first mouse. Morning, William. Good morning, Miss Browning. My crocuses are up. How nice. Lovely day, isn't it? I don't know yet. Mr. Dexter, come in. Oh, yes, just now. You notice, was he humming? Humming? Mr. Dexter? Oh, why, no. Oh, uh, was he wearing anything? Why, the, the... Never mind. Good morning. Hello, Kendall. Well, Kendall, our troubles are over. I think we got that gang of cutthroats licked. You watch them, Stephen. They're wolves. Well, here's one lamb they're going to find too tough to gobble. Oh, stop wearing Kendall and enjoy the spring. I'm going to. Uh, where's McNabb? Oh, he'll be here in a minute. After that, you see the Crawford Rand people. I'll have the paving contracts ready. I'll break it up at noon. Then you lunch with Senator Cordelli at the League Club. Don't mention his wife. It upsets him. Be back here by 3. We have a conference with the plant managers until 5.30. And then can I go home? Yes. After you've had a haircut. Huh? Here's some checks to sign. Come in. Excuse me, sir, but you dropped this. Hmm? Oh, yes, thank you, Leo. <laughs> thank you. Yes. I thought I'd have... got a pin. I'll get one. Tweet, 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 tweet. Ah, oh, shut up. Huh? Hmm? Knew you'd have one. Nita, oh, Anita, ra, 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 ra,
Nice lines. Yes, very. And an automatic rumble seat. Hmm? Here's your pin. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Chief. Oh, hello, Mac. I've got the advertising layouts. Good, good. Let's see them. Nope. No, Mac, they're old school. They sell cement? Yes, but we must keep up with the times. Now, I want you to give me something with a little heart in it. Something more, uh, more modern, strong, and... Uh, well, anyway, Mac, I, I want a new campaign. And it must be warm, and it must be human. The cement you love to touch. Yes, the cement you love... No, no, no. I mean we must make our cement stand out, give it personality. I'll tell you what you could do. You could perfume it. No, now, now, look. There, now. That's the kind of thing I mean. That has punch, appeal. Uh, we'll use a girl. We'll make her our trademark. I think you got something there. Hmm. Little Annie's cement. That'd be kind of cute. You could... Now, look here, Mac. Uh, let me see some new layouts, will you? Just to uh, think the idea over. Mother hen it. You know? Yes, Chief. <clears throat> Kendall, uh, who is that girl? Well, I don't know her name. But her face is on the canned tomatoes I use. Get hold of her. I'll see her myself. Wouldn't it be easier and quicker to pay her off right now? Get her. Am I all right? You're perfect. Now, nah, Charles, I hate nibblers. Oh, don't, darling, will you please? Don't be dull. I'll get in touch with him tomorrow. No, no, I'll phone you and arrange an appointment. Please do, but uh, not before 11. Good night. Good night, uh, Miss... Uh, uh, good night. Mm -hmm. the chief in? No, he's lunching at the Yale Club. Thank you kindly. Let's see it. Uh, Come on, Mac. I've been to Paris. Well... William. Ten years I've been with him. I've seen him take a little business and make it a big one. And now, has he gone daffy, do you think? Keep the kilts on, Mac. He'll get over this. Should I have more sketches made? Those were his orders. Sure, humor him. Oh, but pretty girls on cement bags. Can't you get him to drop it? You leave it to me. Thanks, Kendall. My entire department thanks you. William, back to the keys. Miss Phyllis Walden, please. Miss Walden is lunching on the terrace. One moment, please. Terrace? Miss Walden? Uh, the extension of phone is in use at the moment. Will you wait? Thank you. Johnny. Yes. Telephone to Miss Walden as soon as Mrs. Leibwood is finished. I began to get little posing jobs. Lipstick, silk stockings, candy bars. Then came my big break. One day I heard that Zimmer Dairy Products were planning a big campaign. Something told me that I should phone immediately to Mr. Zimmer himself. What, uh, the same something that told you to phone me last night? <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I got the job and it made me. You must have seen the ads. I was an angel, carrying a cheese. <laughs> I wish there was some way of tying an angel in with my cement. Well, of course, cement's a little more dignified than cheese. Yeah, some of my associates are not very enthusiastic about my idea of using you. They seem to think we ought to use something more symbolic of strength. 
And my secretary suggested an elephant. Mm. I knew she was a clever woman. Well, I, um, I don't suggest strength. No, no, that's just my point. Strength doesn't appeal to men. Now take me. I'm a man. Well, here's a picture of you, and here's an elephant. Oh, uh, so sorry, sir. I was uh, just illustrating a point. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, elephant, man, woman. A new sort of triangle. <laughs> well, which would you want to look at? Which would you want to get a know better? Take out to dinner. Now, just a minute. Let me think. It depends on the sort of man you are, Mr. Dexter. Oh, I can assure you, I've never taken out an elephant in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved. When do I go to work for you? Oh, uh, well, uh, the campaign's only just taking shape. We must uh, get together and uh, discuss things. Uh, call for you, Miss Walden. Thank you. This is Miss Walden speaking. Who? Stephen Dexter's secretary. Oh, Miss Walden, I'm afraid I have rather disappointing news for you. That job is off. Off? Uh, so sorry. If Mr. Dexter ever does need you, I have your name and address in our tickler system. Goodbye. Hey, look, wait, what is all this? Well, Mr. Dexter changed his mind. Uh, he's going back to his old type of advertising. Let me get this straight. Uh, when was this decision made? Well, uh, just before Mr. Dexter left for uh, uh, Chicago on the 8.30 plane. Oh, on the 8.30 plane this morning. Uh, would you mind holding on for just a moment? What's your name? Stephen Dexter. Stephen Cement Dexter? Sure, why? When do you expect Mr. Dexter to return from Chicago, Mr. Browning? Oh, not for weeks and weeks. I'm afraid there's no use waiting, Miss Walden. His mind is made up. Suppose we say he was emphatic and let it go at that. Well, I'd like awfully to know what Mr. Dexter said about me. What? Uh, would you mind speaking louder? We seem to have a bad connection. Well, he said... Um, you're sure now you want to know what he said? Yeah. Uh, he said, uh, you call up Miss Goofy Face and tell her she can't peddle her pan to Steve Dexter. Oh, no, he's really not a brute. He's rather nice in one or two ways. Uh, oh, it's just that women are <laughs> things to him. Uh, one of those fiends, huh? Well, uh, what else did he say? Tell me. He said, uh, listen, kid, scrap that girl on the bag idea. It won't sell cement to have a silly-looking blonde sitting on a dam. The cat, are those his exact words? Oh, no, no, I never quote Mr. D's exact words anymore. I had such bitter notes from the telephone company. Well, uh, thanks awfully for telling me. Goodbye. Hello, fiend. <laughs> Good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, well, go ahead. Dock me. Where were you? Attending to a little business. Well, after all, I'm supposed to keep track of your appointments. What are my orders for this afternoon? Hmm. You must have had a particularly good lunch. So-so. I had to break three important engagements you had this morning. Sorry, kid. Now, Stephen, I think you ought to give me a little advance notice the next time you're going to be off with your Bula Bula friends getting tiddly. I'm not in the least bit tiddly. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, let's get some work done then. Oh, by all means. Oh, William, will you tell Mr. McNabb? The chief will see him right away. Oh, by the way, when's that Miss, uh, the poster girl coming in to see me? Oh, I'm afraid I have rather disappointing news for you. You couldn't get her? No, not available. Uh, shall I send in you a bid on that subway job? Yes. Um, what did she say? Oh, it all boiled down to no. Oh, I'll give any reason. He did. He did? Who's he? Her fiancé. Her what? The man she's going to marry. Handsome, too. He said, tell Senor Dexter that my lovely Felice is going to give up her career and come to live on my rancho and be my miha muir. <laughs> How you say wives? Far enough, eh? Yes. Very rich. Has his own plane. Hmm. Have it with him? Well, I caught her at the airport just before they... <laughs> oh, 
I suppose they were flying to Chicago, too. What do you mean, too? Oh, just uh, two. Now, uh, about that subway job. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, uh, you might tell Van Horn to get the contracts ready, will you? I have. I... Here are these things, Chief. Ah. Huh. No, that girl on the bag stuff is out. It won't sell cement. I don't want any silly-looking blonde sitting on my dams. She can't peddle her pan to Steve Dexter. Hey, kid. Stick to the old reliables, Mac. What'll I do with these? I'll leave them there. Miss Browning will file them in our tickler system. Stephen, this is unworthy of you. How could you do anything so dishonorable, so low? Me? Eavesdropping, wiretapping, listening in on my private conversations. What will it be next? Keyholes? I happened to be lunching with Miss Walden when you phoned. Happened, happened. You told me to get her. And then you date her behind my back as if you didn't trust me. Well, she, uh, she phoned my house last night. I thought it would save time if I... Well, I'll be... Now you've got me on the defensive. Call me up some morning, but not before 11. How do you Kendall, like that? Kendall, I'm going to say just one thing, and then we'll let the whole matter drop. You're my right hand. I, I'm not at all sure that I could carry on this business without you. But I think I can manage my own life. Suppose you let me, hmm? All right. Now, on the subway deal, I, I think you should like hold on the way you say, thing. all right. Well, sorry, but, you know, I'm a little tired of acting as nurse to a juvenile delinquent. You play with matches, and then I have to help put out the fire. I am going out with Miss Walden tonight, tomorrow night, the next night, and every night and day that she'll see me. And how do you like that? I don't like it at all. Well, it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't. No, it doesn't. No. All right. If you're sure this is the real thing, my blessing, Stephen. I won't try and stop you. I'm through. What? You... You're not going to leave me with all this work, with that subway job and, and maybe that combine cracking down on me? I am not through working for you. I'm just through caring what you do outside office hours. Mm, well, that's better. <laughs> for me, not for you. Close it, Butch. It's not a question of ethics. We have an objective. It's merely a question of what we can and will do. My colleagues and I have agreed on a plan of action. This meeting seems to me a, a mere formality. There it is, Dexter. We're in, you're out. We gave you a chance to sell your company to us at a fair price. Fair? <laughs> we gave you a chance to come in with us. You chose to fight us. You're licked. We're going to get that injunction the first thing in the morning. We'll tie up everything you've got. Oh, it's a technicality, a trick. It's unfair. It's filthy. I agree with the learned counsel. But you have no case. No, Mr. Van Horn. Remember this. The victory is not always to the strong alone. Ah, but that's the way to bet. Well, that's all I think. Unless Dexter has something to say. Oh, gentlemen, I'm a little fellow. You're big. Everything's big about you. Your fortunes, your profits, and your bids. A bit on that subway job. Pretty raw, gentlemen. If you'd got it, you'd have been robbing not your own kind, but the taxpayers, the little fellows. Well, my bid was fair. I got the contract. It's a big one, and I'm going to need all my reserves to handle it. Tomorrow, you intend to make a legal move that will stop my carrying out the contract and force me into bankruptcy. No, not just me, but Stephen Dexter and company. That and company, gentlemen, means a lot of men and women who had faith in me. You had me come here so that you could prove to me that I was cornered and outnumbered. I'd be a fool to go on fighting. Well, you're right. Here, yeah, here! Yeah. It would be wise to hand over here and now the business that my associates and I have worked so hard to make. I should be smart and surrender. Well, I'm going to be foolish and fight.
I'll tell you what you could do. You could... No. No. If you could only just... Now... Now, it's Dexter. What's the matter, William? Did the Dodgers lose? Mr. Dexter, I... I've got a financial proposition. I... Uh, I happen to have a couple of thousand lying around loose and thought maybe I'd take a little flyer and cement. Oh, thank you, William. May call on you any day now. Well, the cash will not be available for a week or so, but uh, I'll start negotiations immediately with a uh, certain party. Oh, now, you mustn't mortgage anything, William. Well, the, the party happens to be my wife. She makes me put everything in her name. Can she do that, Mr. Van Horn? No. Oh. Well, sometimes a good idea for a man to have his property in his wife's name. It's a perfectly legitimate way to keep unscrupulous persons from getting any of it through unfair suits or... Uh... Are husbands unscrupulous persons? Huh? Oh, frequently, frequently. Uh, not you, will you? You better run along now. Stephen, you've got to get married. Huh? Oh, that'll stop him cold. Oh, are you sure? Well, they can't tie up your business or your money if you haven't got any, can they? I'm going to have you put every nickel you've got, every bag of cement, your house, the shirt on your back in your wife's name. Oh, there must be some other way. Oh, for instance. No, no, Steve, this is it. Oh, I don't like it, Roger. Could Listen, we hold up? you've got to get married today. Hey, where are you going? I'll be back soon, I hope. Listen here, there are a lot of papers to be signed. Transfer of bank accounts, power of attorney. I can't do a thing without you. Call up the bank, will you please, and tell Mr. Beresford not to go. It's important. Matter of life and death and all that. Uh, Kendall, uh, oh, oh, dear. William, get Miss Walden on the phone. Walt? Oh, hello, 10th National Bank. Is Mr. Beresford there? I'll find out what time the marriage license bureau closes. No use. You have to wait three days in New York. The law huh? says 72 hours. My mistake. Oh, hello, Mr. Beresford. Mr. Stephen Dexter's coming to the bank at once. Will you wait, please? Thank you. Nearest place you can get married in a hurry, South Carolina. Kendall, uh, find out when I can get a plane to South Carolina. Well, it'll take us at least two hours to get the papers ready. I called Miss Walden, but she's not at home, sir. Uh, uh, it seems she's out posing someplace. Oh. oh. Come on, Steve, we gotta get to the bank. Oh, uh, I'll be right there. Kendall. Kendall. Kendall! Uh -huh. oh, can you find her? Well, give me time. Hey, make it snappy, will you? Uh, Kendall, I'll have to leave it to you. I thought you told me to keep out of it. But this life. is business. Stephen, are you sure it's good business? Oh, uh, yes. Is she ready for this? Only I had two more weeks. One. Does she love you? Well, I'm not asking her to love me yet. Just to marry me. Oh, just to marry you. Well, Stephen, to a woman, marriage is serious, sacred. No matter what she is. Oh, find her. Find her and deliver her to the plane. With a bill of lading? Get her. Well, I can't drag her there by her phony eyelashes. Oh, now, Kendall, you're a woman. Well, has that got wrong? Hey, get a wiggle on. Coming. Oh, well, you know how to talk to another woman. Yes. Yes. Now, Phyllis, enjoy it. Eh? Smile, be happy, be jelly. Come, bend your knees. No, a little more, a little more. That's good. Hold it, give it to you. Now. Chase your peasant costume right away. Come, come, come. Uh, no bonnets today. Oh, hello. And goodbye. I have a message for you from Mr. Dexter. Have you really? A very important message. Oh, well, come right into my dressing room this way, please. You can tell me all about it while I'm changing. God, don't trip. Do sit down. I'm dying to hear what you have to tell me. Well, here's Mr. Dexter's proposition. He wants you to marry him tonight. He does? Well, I hardly know what to say. Yes or no would do nicely. Well, this isn't a very romantic way for Stephen to propose, but I, I suppose he must have a good reason. He has. Uh, look, Miss Walden, we're both girls trying to get along, so let's not get coy about this. I'm not batting for Cupid. This is strictly business. Oh, I see. Well, I haven't time to give you all the angles. I guess all you need to know is this puts you within spending distance of some very serious sugar. Go on. I'm listening. Well, if you play it smart, you can write your own ticket. For certain financial reasons, it would be very convenient if Mr. Dexter had a wife. As a matter of fact, he's got to get married. He's in a spot, huh? 
What a break for baby. A week of nice, easy work, and I'm Mrs. Stephen Dexter. Boy, oh boy. Sure, uh, if you want to, on terms like that. Well, the terms I'll get will be all right. Well, I'd be glad to be through with this posing job. Oh, Ken, what does Steve pay you? Plenty. I'll see that you get more. Now, do go on. Do we meet at midnight at the old Red Mill? At the airport? At five. Oh, good. We're flying. Yeah. To Chicago, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> no, no. To Charleston. Charleston. How nice. You know, I've never been married in Charleston. Do you think I'm a dope? Of course not. Really, Brownie, you ought to do something about yourself. No. Too late. Take a beat. Silly looking, aren't you? Uh-huh. When I do marry Steve, and I'm going to, I'll keep you around for laughs. Well, I love your lies. They're not good, but they're very, very funny. Thank you. This last one was a positive howl. Oh, it was nothing. Wouldn't you like to be able to go back and say, um, Steve, that Walden dame has a price tag, but oh, I'm not that kind of girl. Girl, you should be wearing brass buttons. You were born to be a cop. And the only way you'll ever get a man is by arresting him. Well, Dexter told me to ask you. Tell him I'd love to marry him tonight. But my trousseau's in the laundry. Okay, I'll tell him. Is all warmed up, sir? Ready to leave any time. All right, thank you, thank you. All deeds and other assurances in the law of police and left demise, bargain and sell. Sit down, will you? Smoke a pipe, chew gum. You got me as nervous as a bridegroom. Bridegroom. <laughs> it's time we were taking off. Oh, stop having pups. You can trust Kendall. There's Kendall. Don't see Phyllis, though. Doesn't look worried. What's she got to be worried about? Where's Phyllis? I couldn't get her to come, not for love nor money. Oh. Well, you can't blame her, Stephen. No girl wants to get married, just as a favor. Well, it was a nice business when I had it. Had it? You still got it. You can keep it, too, if you work fast. All you've got to do is marry someone. Doesn't uh. make any difference who she is or what she is. Of course, it'd be better if she were a girl you could trust. But all she's really got to do is say, I do. Kendall, what do you say? I do. people are entering a glorious new world in which you will both need each other. I needn't tell you of the reward of constants and tolerance. Your folks are a good example of that. David and Excuse Lucy, me. I'm proud of my part in this ceremony. Now, if you will join hands, we'll begin. Do you, David, take this woman to be your wedded wife? To have and to hold from this day forward, for richer, for poorer, until death do you part? I do. Will you honor, cherish, and protect her in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? I will. Do you, Lucy, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? To have and to hold from this day forward, for richer, for poorer, until death do you part? I do. Will you honor and cherish him in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? I will. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Justice of the Peace, County of Marion, State of South Carolina, to unite you in the bonds of holy matrimony, 
I pronounce you man and wife. Congratulations. Thank you. Help kiss the bride. Well, son, I'm Judge Peabody be ready for you in just a moment. Excuse me. She's in good hands. Thank you, Dad. Dad. Kendall, I, I don't know. Perhaps we. It's all right, Steve. Roger. Very far over here. Then I want to. Oh. That's you, huh? Well, congratulations. Did you have a nice trip? Very. You should have been with us. Here's the marriage certificate. Well, I hope they don't look too hard at the date. Start yelling collusion. Well, we can worry about that in the morning. Now then, what do I have to sign? Right here. Full name, that's Stephen Aldrich. Whatever your name is. And uh, What does Kendall have to sign? Nothing tonight. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kendall, keeping you up like this. All right. I thought you'd been needed. Hello? Does it? Well, uh, I think we all rate a nightcap. Huh? <laughs> Make mine buttermilk. Oh, buttermilk. There's usually some in the icebox. Oh, Roger, do you know where I keep the... Oh, yes, yes, I see you do. Yeah. <sighs> you're out of the woods. Those vultures don't give up so easy, though. It's a hard vultures. Roger. Time to go to bed. Huh? Really? Time to go to bed. No, thanks. Come on, come on. You've had a tough day. You're going to have a tougher one tomorrow. You better go home and get some sleep. Don't you, don't you want me to wait and drive you home? No, no. I'll get a taxi on the corner stand. Okay. Well, good night, all. Buttermilk. Horribly healthy. Well, you made me drink my first glass. Mm. Guess I was born bossy. Well, I must say I sleep better since I started drinking it. But I still don't like it. Do you? Loathe it. We have a lot to do tomorrow. Yes, we have. Good night. Kendall. Yes, Stephen? 
You're a rare sort of woman. You don't let people down. And I, uh, <laughs> well, thank you for marrying me. You're welcome, I'm sure. I don't really feel like kidding about this. Oh, it's nothing, of course, no more than I do every day. See people for you, sign your letters. But that boy and girl down there tonight. Her eyes. Do you remember how she looked at him? Hmm. No, no. Yeah, you're my wife. No, I'm only the woman who married. And I'm a liar. I've known that for years. And right now, I don't seem to care. But I'm not here because you want me. I, I'm just substituting for the woman you really want. Phyllis Walden would be here if I hadn't lied to her. And to you. Right now, I seem to have run out of lies. Do you mean that, that she really said yes? She said no. I made her. She had to refuse the way I put your bid. Bid? Yes. I knew she turned me down. No woman can, well, put herself up for sale, even if she is. You made Phyllis believe that, that I thought I could buy her? Do you mean that you treated her in my name as if she were uh, cheap and nasty? Oh, not cheap. You contemptible, unscrupulous, double-crossing... Uh, no, 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 Stephen. Remember, you're a Yale man. This is something you're not going to laugh your way out of. All right, all right. I started something. I couldn't finish it. At least when I realized I'd made a mistake... Mistake? A trifling error. Well, isn't that all it amounts to, really? What have I done that can't be undone? Your business is safe for the time being, and you can go... Well, when you see your Goldilocks in the morning, you can look her straight in the eye. She'll be amazed to learn that you have a conscience of a sort. <laughs> and so am I. Well, I'm not. It's not conscience. You would have found me out soon enough. Besides, I don't like being kissed by a man who keeps his eyes closed. Well, they're open now. Oh, Kendall, what am I going to do with you? What do you want to do, Stephen? Now, now, stop acting married. We are, you know. Well, don't take advantage of a technicality. Stop looking at me like that and go home. Where am I? Will you please get out of my house? Your house? <laughs> You're going to get tough with me, Browning. The name is Dexter, and I am. All right, if it's a fight you want, you've got one, to the finish. Is that a threat? Are you going? <laughs> yes, but I'll be back. Never. Kendall? Yes, Stephen? You're fired. Yes, Stephen. Oh, uh, good night, Stephen. To you. Oh, now, Stephen, don't be stuffy. We were both tired and excited last night. We said lots of things. I meant them. So did I, but you should be at the office. Mr. Mumford will be there with the subway contract. You know what an old fuss budget he is. Ouch, ooh. I thought there might be some way I could sign it myself, but there isn't. Can't sign anything, can't do anything. I can't even get lunch money. Legally, you're me and I'm a pauper. I'll have to ask a truce. You got me out on a limb. I haven't lost my touch. It isn't easy for me to ask favors of you. How some is wonderful. But Are you coming down to the office with me? Hmm. Are you coming with me? Kendall, what am I going to do about you? Well, we're not on the society page. That closes early. Try the financial section. Maybe they didn't get the story at all. No harm done if they did get it. Here we are, on the sport page, next to a wrestling match. <laughs> this 
Oh, the fools. Don't they read the proof? I'm not 92. How do you like that look? It's pretty, isn't it, Mr. Mumford? Well, girls, you're certainly making your fine show with that. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Here you are, Leo. Right over here. That's right. Make a nice show. That's Excuse that's me, fine. please. Uh, John, if you need one more over here, we'll have to turn the arms down. That's fine. Excuse me, please. I beg your pardon, sir. It might be my own. I think one more in there. Oh, uh, as soon as we finish with Mumford, I want you to call the Swan Club. Tell Luigi to reserve a table for me tonight. We'll be there at eight. We? Uh, Phyllis and I. Oh. Wouldn't it be more discreet to wait till the uh, honeymoon is over? I'm taking Miss Walden to dinner at the Swan Club tonight. Well, now, remember, you're supposed to be a bona fide bridegroom. You could behave like one in public, at least. I got an idea. Why don't you have her pack a box lunch? Then you could take her on a picnic. Nobody would know about it except you, baby, and the ants. Enjoying yourself? You two are going to have a cozy evening chatting about your bachelor days. <laughs> How'd she take it when you broke the news to her? None of your business. Oh, that's right. You haven't told her. I forgot. She's not conscious before 11. Oh, well, you can spring your alibi before she sees this. I'm sure she never reads anything but the cold cream ads, if she can read. I wish I could afford to strangle you. Here they come. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, congratulations. Here's the contract. I wish you'd run through it as soon as possible. I'm due at a board meeting. Oh, I'll try not to keep you long. Come into my office. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, this is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, she'll have to sign it. <laughs> she does all the signing. <laughs> oh, she's the boss now. <laughs> He's such a tease, Miss Mumford. Mm, it's lovely. Of course, you're the real boss, puppy. Well, just so long as somebody signs. <laughs> Forget the day. Oh, we won't forget, will we? <laughs> that was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Dexter, on behalf of the staff, uh, I want to extend congratulations, felicitations, good wishes, and, uh, and more good wishes. Uh, I'm reminded of a story. Uh, a girl went with a fellow for nine years, and when he proposed, she said, uh, this is so sudden. <laughs> <laughs> We folks who are lucky enough to work two such swell that girl. We saw it coming. We knew it was bound to be. And now that it's here, well, we're as glad as you are. <laughs> Congratulations. Neo, Neo, put it right back right. Mr. Dexter, please. He's very busy. Well, he wishes to see me. He left word that it was urgent and important. Oh. What name, please? Phyllis Walden. Hello? Miss Phyllis Walden to see you. Uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, uh, ask her to wait. Uh, Kendall, w would you mind? Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I just have to excuse Well, Mr. Dexter, I can't tell you how to Which nobody can deny. Hello. Oh, you've got to get out of here. Uh, Phyllis, Phyllis, will you marry me? Right now? Oh, in about uh, two months, I, I hope. Oh, well, then why the hurry? Well, I'll tell you all about everything this evening. Now, please, please say yes. <laughs> Oh, and please go. What goes on? Uh, uh, big, uh, big deal. <laughs> well, uh, what do you say? 
I like you very much, oh, but I... Then accept me now. I'll court you later. Heavily. But darling... Uh... Rice? Who? Rice, aren't you already? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I wonder how that got there. Uh, uh, no, uh, Phyllis, Phyllis, please. <laughs> My husband and I, uh, my husband and I are most grateful for your beautiful words and your beautiful flowers. I speak for both, oh, Mr. Dexter and myself when I say that we are grateful from the bottom of our heart. Aren't we, dear? Uh, what? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Um, excuse me, uh, customer. Phyllis, wait! You, you must listen to me. Bluebeard. Phyllis, it's you I love. Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Every day, always. Nice talk from a bridegroom. Oh, she means nothing to me. I'm not going to live with her. I won't even speak to her except on business. That's all our marriage is, business. Oh, I begin to see. Oh, then, then will you marry me? Oh, I might if you'd coax me very hard. <laughs> I'm going to coax and coax and coax. Your bride won't like that. I hope you both will be very happy. Thank you again. I'm sorry we were interrupted. Now. Oh, oh, I think this clause right here could be more specific. Ah, yes, yes, I see your point. Yeah, that could be changed to read that in the event the party of the second part was... Hey, where's Stephen? Uh, he stepped out a minute. Wait in my office, will you, Roger? Should fail to carry out the foregoing stipulations, then the party of the first part... Oh, uh, will you excuse me just a second? You're the luckiest of men. Me? Such a wife, so charming. Mine? So beautiful, so brilliant. Cassie, I too adore her. But only as a friend, Dexter. I'm not Dexter. I am glad. Where is he? In there. Legally, of course. Kendall! I am so happy for you. Jose! And you, senor. I am going to call you Stephen, yes? Emphatically, no. He is not my husband. I should have known. You American women. You get married one night, and the next morning one finds the bride at the desk talking business with a, a, a bill collector. Oh, well, thank you very much for coming, Jose. But I'm frantically busy. I hope uh, you and your husband invite me up for the warming of the house. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, when may I call? Uh, perhaps for dinner? Uh, uh, tonight, the Swan Club, 8 o'clock. These tonight? Yes, yes, why not? <laughs> goodbye, Jose, goodbye. Factionate, isn't he? Well, as I was saying, they hollered foul and asked some very pointed questions about you and this last-minute marriage. This will kill you. They're going to try to prove it isn't bona fide. Well, it isn't. It's just an optical illusion. If they can prove that, not very good for our side. In fact, very bad indeed. Do they know Stephen and I live apart? Not yet, but they will soon enough. Oh, well, suppose we did live under the same roof. Would that help our story? Well, it would make it more plausible. Help it, of course it would help it. Well, it's a lot to expect, don't you think? A lot of newlyweds managed to put up with it. But under the circumstances, how on earth could we... Oh, Stephen's back. Uh, oh, Roger, just a minute. Mumford's still here. Terrible, isn't it? Yes, that's a satisfactory. Then sign it, please. And please initial all the changes. So sorry for the delay, Mr. Mumford. Things are a bit uh, disorganized this morning. <laughs> Hi, Steve. You busy? Yes, yes. Don't bother me. But this is important. Oh, is it? Well, that's different. Oh. Uh, give me that. Uh, no, stop hey, it, Roger. Hey, wait. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mumford, <laughs> if you don't mind. If, well, for just a minute. Well, just, great. This is, if this is the business, I, I'm, I'm so I'm, sorry. The thing just... Uh, stop wiggling, uh, will you please, Stephen? Yes, hurry, hurry. Uh, there we are. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, not padded. <laughs> nice work, team. Well, Kendall, you better go home and start packing. Oh. Are you going away? 
Oh, your attorney advises me to move. Move? Where? Your house. My house? My house? Naturally, your house, your house. Would Kendall move into my house? My house? She's capable of anything. That goes on your bill. Flatterer. Bah. Oh, now, really, you've hit some serious trouble. What more? The big fellows smell a rat. Pardon my French. And we've got to convince them that this marriage is on the level. Now, we haven't got a chance unless Kendall lives with you until the storm is over. Oh. Get the idea? I do, and I dislike it heartily. Well, it's the only way we can bamboozle them. Who thought up this unsavory scheme? What's so unsavory about my being your house guest? Uh, well, then treat her as a boarder. You two don't have to act married unless somebody's looking. But think of the position it puts me in. We Dexters prefer death to dishonor. Well, what about me? What am I going to tell my husband? Huh? Not you, the good one I'm going to marry next. Well, have it your own way. I advise you to grit your teeth and go through with it. No. no. Very well. Very well. If that's your attitude, I will see you in the bankruptcy court. Goodbye, prudes. Look, is this any time to be hoity-toity? Since you two are going to be such scaredy cats, why don't you send a wire to... No, he wouldn't get it till tomorrow. Call it... No, he's out of town. Well, get any respectable relative or pal who's willing to give up his privacy, have him come and live... Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Forget it. Forget it. Would they be? Oh, there you are. You look cute in a bowler. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your trip. <laughs> Senor Dexter, my host? <laughs> well, it must be some other Dexter. This is my regular table. Uh... Ah, I million mean, pardon, senor. Of course, it is another Dexter for whom I wait, but uh, I have made a faux pas. Forgive me. Oh, that's quite all right. <laughs> uh, the senorita will forgive me, too. Certainly. Your health, senor. And your, your happiness, senorita. Do, sir? Uh, yes, thanks very much, but uh, perhaps this chair will be better. Very well, sir. Peek 
Kendall. Ah, Kendall. But you look, you, you, uh, you simply look. Ah, he's real. But of course now. Your husband, he did not come? Oh, she had to stop and pick up another guest. Ah, a man. Now, what would you talk to a man about? I think you're going to like her, Jose. Maybe you know her already, uh, Phyllis Walden. Ah, Phyllis Walden. No. Lovely girl. Oh, there they are. They got here first. Come on. Kendall, wait. Wait. Is she a blonde? This year. A very, very blonde blonde? She's almost invisible. Why? I have seen her. Sure you have, on Barnes. Oh, by the way, she rumbles like an angel. Well, let's go, Stephen. There you are, you little rascals. You were waiting for us, we were waiting for you. Oh, Phyllis, may I present Senor Jose de Pagan? How do you, you do? do? Jose, this is Stephen. <laughs> uh, so you're the Dexter who married Kendall? Yes, I'm the Dexter. Uh, did you order dinner? Suppose we dance first. Oh, I just... Oh, well, you two young folks enjoy yourselves. Oh, Jose, order dinner, will you please? What are you doing to me now? Not to you, for you. Jose asked me to dance. Well, you knew perfectly well that I'd be here. <laughs> There's Stephen Dexter, his new bride. So it is. Smile, smile. Thank you. Oh, me tighter. Oh. Wedding march. Congratulations, Mr. Dexter. Oh. And a world of happiness to you, Mrs. Dexter. Oh, thank you. See an angel, darling. <laughs> Soupçon of garlic. The merest whisper of garlic. Oh, hello? Then you put a little touch of Tabasco. You stir very, very slowly. Très bien. Bien. Uh, Miss Phyllis, will you not dance with me? Oh, yes, I'd love to. Thank you. Let's set this one out. Careful in front of Jose. I will. But don't call me Poppy. Why not? Well, it, it sounds so uh, intimate. You've got me in wrong enough as it is. Oh, Phyllis is broad minded. Look at the way she's taking the news about your wife being your house guest. Or did you tell her? Who is that grasshopper? Jose de Braganza. <laughs> Biggest bridge and damn man in South America. De Braganza. Ha! Never heard of him. Now, don't try to sell him any of your cement. May I cut in? Thank you. Darling, I'm so sorry. I just have to stay. But if you want to leave, I'll join you later. Oh, no. You need your gang right here. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Would you mind if I gave your wife a double Mickey Finn? Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Walden is a close friend? Of Stevens. I will kill him. That wouldn't help me. I will kill her. Well, now you're talking, but no thank you. Then I will hate her to please you. Of course, it will be very difficult. She is very beautiful. You know something? I think perhaps maybe I disturb her a little. I wish you'd disturb her a lot. That, of course, I could do, but uh, at the present moment, I'm in no position to do very much disturbing. Uh, Garçon. Monsieur? Of the menu, please. Voilà, monsieur. Candle, look. New potatoes, 85 cents. Spring peas, $1.10. Fresh asparagus, $3. She is sure to like fresh asparagus. 
Jose, do you remember when I was broke and you were... Uh, yes, I put the right money on the right racehorse. Mm. No, I do not remember. Well, I do. I, uh, it begins. You will uh, pardon me? Mind if I watch? No. May I cut you out? Mm. You mustn't say, may I cut you out. That's asking a man if you may steal his girl. Oh, then I make a good mistake. <laughs> How do you do? Oh, very pretty. Mm. May I keep it? What's that got to do with me? Nothing. Till the first of the month. What? You mean to tell me that you had the... That... You know, Miss Walden, you dance like nobody's business. Thank you, Senor de Buganza. You dance like everybody's business. <laughs> uh, you two could make a fortune dancing together. Uh, that is, if Jose needed a fortune. <laughs> Ducky, isn't it? Cela the caviar, monsieur. It will do. Have you uh, bought any more polo ponies lately, Jose? Polo ponies? Polo ponies? Uh, no. I thought I'd read where you'd had some sent up from Brazil. Oh, just a small string. No, I'd love to see them sometime. May I? I, um, I have sent them back to the Pizanda. Pizanda? Uh, Quinta? A Hadada. Hacienda. Oh, you mean farm. Her farm. <laughs> How do you like that, Jose? Farm. <laughs> 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 what am I laughing for? I don't know. <laughs> oh, farm. Oh, you must tell her about your farm. How long does it take you to ride across it? Tell her. A happy day, and uh, that is the little one. Mm. That'll give you a rough idea. <laughs> Will you show me some pictures of it? I think I have some. Uh, my valet as yet has not unpacked my trunk. Uh, I have moved into a new apartment, and as yet, yet I have not settled. How do you like the Ritz? The Ritz? The Ritz is very nice. Oh, you must all come and have dinner with me soon. I'd love it. You like to sail? Mm -hmm. Then you must spend the weekend with me on my yacht. Ah, uh, I am terribly sorry I have forget the yacht she is in the dry dock. I have some onions. Um, onions. Thank you. Somebody's yawning. I am not. I'm as fresh as a daisy. Well, come on, Daisy. Take your wife home. We want you both to come to dinner very soon. The address is 299 Beekman Place. Now, will you excuse us? But of course. We will miss you, but we will understand, will we not, Phyllis? Perfectly. Well, um, can't you wait till I pay the check? Let it be Jose's party. No, no, no. I won't permit it. Oh, if Mr. Dexter insists. Uh, waiter, check, please. Uh, no, on second thought, I insist. Well, anything to make you happy. I'll explain to you tomorrow. You're always explaining tomorrow. Uh, well, are you coming with us, Phyllis? Am I to dance alone? Have fun, you do. Good night. Good night, Stephen. Pleasant dreams. It's been charming. Good night. Good night. 
Browning speaking. I'll find out. Oh, Mr. Tryon. before you bite one little eat. Apartment at the Ritz, check. Rent of motor car, check. One, what's this item? One cockatoo. You know a cockatoo. Oh, I know what they are, but what I want to know is how do you use them in making love? Phyllis want one for a pet, so I give her the bird. Oh, that's all right by me. But uh, Jose, $75 for one bird. It talks. That amount of money, it ought to read, write, and vote. Dinner for two, Swan Club, 22.35. Luncheon for three, P. Luncheon for three? Stephen Horned in. Oh, well, next time, see that he picks up the check. Supper for two at the Ritz, 18.25. Check. Breakfast for two. Mm. Breakfast for two, eh? Uh, no. One in the morning, we take a ride with horses in the park. Oh. Well, I'll, uh, I'll pay these bills and give you a check for running expenses. Again. One Z. Oh. Now, I think you ought to cut down the overhead, really, in all fairness to Stephen. Well, of course. Jose, tell me. Uh, what else have you done besides spend money? Oh, I make progress. Yesterday she insulted me, today she slapped my face, and tomorrow... <laughs> Stephen, mm -mm. she must have sent him home early. Well, Jose, really, I I'd love to go. I mean, if Stephen would like to, I'll have to consult him first. You know, he's been so busy lately. Oh, there he is now. Ah, Jose, you're not going? Ah, uh, yes, I must go and see somebody about something else. Oh, well, good night. Good night, Mr. Dexter, Mrs. Dexter. Good night, Jose. Must you entertain that fellow here? Oh, I like Jose. I'll bet down on his fazenda. He has half a dozen wives and a score of papooses. Argentines don't have papooses. Oh, well, I don't care what they have. I don't want him hanging around. Around whom? Well, around anybody. Uh, Kendall, I, I want a divorce. Stephen, that means you've beaten them. Yeah, uh, didn't Van Horn tell you? No. They gave up tonight. Oh, I'm so glad. Yep, they gave up for good. <sighs> I, uh, I do really appreciate all your help, Kendall. <laughs> I'm afraid this is rather short notice, but, uh, well, this is a ticket on the westbound plane. There's a, uh, there's a check in there, too. I want you to have a nice long vacation and 
when you're through at Reno, uh, well, Reno isn't so far from Los Angeles, and Los Angeles isn't so far from Hawaii. And Hawaii isn't far from Japan. Hey. I like being Mrs. Stephen Dexter. If you won't divorce me, I'll divorce you. On what grounds? My grounds just left. Jose? <laughs> That's comical. All right, what was he doing here? Helping you with your homework? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Anytime you're too guilty to think up a good lie, oh boy, are you guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep. Ask Grandma. He was in the house all night. I'll go to bed. Roger, get me a divorce. You mind waiting until morning? Well, how soon can I get one? Well, is Kendall willing? Uh, no. Well, if she fights... She will. And it'll take years. Years? Five years. Your best chance is to disappear and be given up for dead. Of course, it's just a curbstone opinion. So you like being Mrs. Stephen Dexter, hmm? All right. No, no, no. Oh, mother! Stop it! Mother! You stop it, please! Oh. Stop it! I wish you'd make up your mind. Roger, how can I get rid of this woman? Well, not that way, old boy. There is a way, though. I just thought of it. An annulment. How soon can you get me one? Oh, in a few weeks. Are you sure? Well, it ought to be a cinch. What you got to do is show that there's been no marriage to date. Well, you can testify to that. Mm, yeah. Start annulment proceedings in the morning. Right. Might I suggest that you come up fairly soon? Trump that. How can I? I can't. Good night, Stephen. I'm leaving. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what are you going to do about your clothes and things? I'll pick them up in the morning. Well, uh, shall I drive you home? Uh, no, thank you. I'll take a taxi. Uh, don't forget your buttermilk. Good morning, sir. Morning, the paper, sir. You'll pick me up, sir.
How are you, Rog? Hi. Oh, what ails everybody this morning? Feel tip-top myself. Ah, Roger. When will you learn that how a fellow feels in the AM depends entirely upon what he did the previous PM? Now, take us, for example. Look at you and look at me. I'd rather not. There you are. You see, you're crabby. No pep, no zip. And why? What did you do last night? What did I do? <laughs> you had a nightcap, didn't you? I had several, and what's it to you? Well, it proves my point. I didn't. And I'll bet you wouldn't feel the way you look if you followed my example. I dare say. And then why don't you do it? Stephen, you've got me worried. Hmm? What's the matter with you, Roger? Nothing, comparatively, except you. We've been pals since prep school days. But after all, there are certain subjects. Is buttermilk one of them? What's buttermilk got to do with it? Ah, that's what I drank last night. Mouse milk, tiger milk, any kind of milk you want. But what am I going to say when the judge asks me, where was your client on the night of May 14th? What, last night? You know where I was. <sighs> that's just the trouble I do know. I was here in my own home, in my own room, in my own bed. Is that a crime? Well, it's legal. But how am I going to swear that there's no marriage here? Kendall can walk into that court, tell her story, and I'll beat his barred. What story? Oh, Kendall wasn't here. She went home early. Roger, you ought to send your mind out to the dry cleaners. Uh, but first, get me that annulment. If Kendall wasn't here last night, who sits there? Hmm? Nobody. Oh, that's funny. Peterson must have made a mistake. Well, if that's the case, you may consider the annulment in the bag. Splendid, splendid. Well, then, uh, don't you think you'd better be getting a move on, old chap? Come on, come on, alley up. I will not alley up. I haven't had my eggs yet. Eggs with your blood pressure? Say, are you trying to brush me off? Oh, all right, all right. Stay there. Make a pig of yourself. I've told Peterson not to throw things down from the window like that. He's just earning his job, you know. Still a bit of a greenhorn. <laughs> Pretty fast on your feet, aren't you, Peterson? Thank you, sir. Will you have your eggs fried, sir? I don't want the eggs. Okay, just how big a chump do you think I am? Speaking merely as your lawyer, I ask you, is this playing the game? Well, she, she must have come back for her uh, clothes. But you went home and you stayed there. Yes, dear. I went home and I stayed there. Thank you. Hey, hey! Why, you... You, you... you I just sugar, please. Kendall, what did you do with Johnny Taylor? Hmm, that's funny. I put him in Seattle. Huh? Oh, here he is on the floor. Oh, thanks. Sending him to Maine. Now, who do you think would be a good man to send to Kansas City? Hmm? Hey, which one of you bought a cockatoo? Huh? Uh, I did. My old one died. One cockatoo charge off the living expenses? Yep. Well, what are you doing checking up on me? Well, we've got to keep the income tax record straight. Oh. Why don't you send Kelly to Kansas City? He'll be glad to get away from Denver and that little redhead. Oh, is she his secretary? Uh, I see what you mean. Kendall, we can't go on like this. One of us has got to give in. Well, Stephen, I'm waiting. I give you my solemn word that if I live till I have a beard down here, I'll never lay a hand on you. Except maybe in anger. You know, if I thought you meant that, Stephen, I'd, I'd quit right away. Let Phyllis have you. I don't believe it. I believe you love me. Do you see these? They're pants, a symbol of masculinity. There are still a few men left who do not like to be kicked in them, and especially by a lady punter. It hurts their manly pride. Oh, maybe I have been a little too athletic, but here I am. You might just as well make the best of me. Excuse me, sir. There's a man to see Mr. and Mrs. Dexter. He said both at once, and he said it's personal, uh, urgent, and important. Oh, we don't want any brushes. But he's a judge from South Carolina. Judge Peabody? Uh, yes, ma'am. He's, well, he's Judge Martin Peabody. Oh, all right. Show him in. Morning, ma'am. 
morning, sir. Good morning, morning. Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I see you all remember me. Uh, with good reason. <laughs> well, I might as well come right out with what I got to tell you all. I do, by all means. Uh, oh, mind you, it's not as bad as it sounds. The fact is, Mr. and Mrs. Dexter, uh, you all are not married. What? Uh, that is, legally. Huh? You see, uh, one of the boys down at the courthouse made a slight mistake. Uh, he sort of forgot to renew my license. Uh, I thought he had. I, a few days ago, I found out different. So i just been marrying folks right and left, and with no more authority than a jaybird. <laughs> Are you sure we didn't get in under well, the wire? When did your license expire? Uh, four years ago, last January, yes. Oh, but I got a new license now. I know, but after all, I think Well, like... ma'am, now, th there's, there's nothing to go into it to do about. You didn't know. I didn't know. He didn't know. What's been done's been done. You all are sitting pretty compared to me. I gotta go and, and find all those folks and marry them all over again, right? And I'm fixing to start with you. Now, join hands, please. Uh, no, uh, some other time, I think, thanks. Oh, well, <laughs> this one's on me, sir. Oh, no, Your Honor, I think this one's on me. Well, you're not worried about anything. Oh, no, no, no um, I'm not. I... Never mind. Uh, uh, my wife, Mrs. Uh, um, Miss Browning, is uh, very modest. Oh, well, then there's nothing to be nervous about. Come, uh, join hands. No, no, I think my next wedding is going to be a big affair. You know, church. Oh, no, really, I, I don't think I should like one of those big, noisy weddings. You know, I'd feel overdressed in a veil. And oh, but I can see my bride walking down the aisle all in white, with the sunshine streaming through her golden hair. It's quite charming as a brunette, I think. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I reckon you're the head of this family, so I'll just bid you all a very good day. Mm, goodbye, Judge, and any time you're up north, you just drop in. And thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Uh, your <laughs> servant, sir. Now I'd better shake a leg. Yes. Before I go back tonight, uh, I got to legalize four more unions and take in the World's Fair. <laughs> Hello, Hotel Mortimer. Miss Phyllis Walton, please. Here's your party. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, hello. Uh, Miss Phyllis Walton, please. Help! Hello. Hello. Phyllis, hello. Yes, Stephen. Oh, speak louder, dear. I can't hear you. Come nearer the phone. Is this better? Now, Phyllis, listen carefully. I want you to come down to the office quickly. I'm not married. I've never been married. Have you told your wife? Oh, you keep out of this. <laughs> Service? Well, well, <laughs> well <laughs> yes. Um, Phyllis, we can be married. Uh, if you like. And if you find my financial statement a little overworked, just file it under gravy and call the district attorney's office. Uh, certainly, Miss... Uh, Miss Browning. Why? Why? William, I... Kendall, my darling, today is the happiest day of my whole life. Good. How much money have you got left? A few. You need some. No, but you will. And you better hang on to it and make it last a long time. From now on, you're on your own. But, Kendall, my dear, I have something very important for to tell you. Save it for posterity. Ah, but, Kendall, today I popped the question. Okay, Jose, write me a letter about it. But I have no time to write a letter. Now, I get the license. All right, all right. Don't hit anybody. It is not for an automobile. It is for Phyllis. Oh, a dog license. No, 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 no. A marriage license. Tomorrow I get a job, Saturday we get married, and Sunday we live happily ever afterward. Uh, of course, you told her all about yourself. Oh, certainly. Everything? Uh, well, uh, not everything. Oh, that's what I thought. But I'm beginning to hint. I told her the other day, I do not have two big haciendas, but I only have perhaps, maybe, a little one. How'd she take it? She smiled. Mm -hmm. Well, she's going to laugh right out loud when you tell her where you got your courting money from. That I say for the honeymoon. Well, you better dash right home to her apartment, take her in your arms, and hold her tight. Because she's making other arrangements on the phone. She's not at home on the phone. She's in there with Stevens, making arrangements to let him down easy. She got here already? She's in there with your husband. He's not my husband. He never was my husband. We're not married. Oh, Kendall. Oh, but who am I to cast it for a stone? He's in there alone with her, and she's free. Yeah, and it's a lot of cement. Oh, no. Come. From now on, you're waiting for me. The 
Quickly, quickly. Quick. Choose. Him or me? How dare you break in here like this? I must ask you to get out at once. Over your dead body. Well, if you would rather I kicked you out, I shall be only too happy to oblige. Stephen, I like you. Felix likes you even more than I do. But you cannot win her never. You have no chance at all against me. She is in love with Jose, madly. Since when? Since always, since the beginning of time. When the world was young and damp, and I was a bullfrog, and you were a cow frog. It is like that with you and Kendall, with all lovers. Phyllis, I can't honestly claim that my acquaintance with you dates back as far as his. Oh, mind you, not that I question for one moment the truth of all he has to tell us about his origin and pedigree. On the contrary, but you know me, who I am and what I do. Uh, Jose comes from one of the oldest families in South America. Uh, it's one of the largest, too, I dare say. Phyllis, you owe it to yourself to find out a lot about this fellow. He's rich, yes. But only in our love. Well, you don't move from a frog pond to the Ritz on love. And by the way, where do you get your money, Senor Braganza? Well, he, uh... Oh, well, I know all about that. Jose told me. Would you mind telling me? Not at all. He gets his money from the same place you do. Cement. Cement. I beg your pardon. Uh, oh, what's the matter with you now? Well, I'm a little... Goodbye, Jose. Goodbye, uh, Phyllis. Good luck. Come, my darling. Oh. We will be late. Well, yeah, but late, late for what? Hey, wait. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. We haven't finished our discussion. Ah, 12 bottles of Old Remorse Rye. Oh, that's mine. Here it is. Ritz Hotel. Now, do you use your suite at the Ritz for business? No, I haven't got a suite at the... I've never lived... You say the Ritz? Let's see that. I can cover up for you. We can charge it off your entertainment. Now, this block of checks here, 100, 150, 100, 200, may not to Jersey Brigger. Oh, you got a new tailor? No, I'll still get my clothes at. Give, give me those checks. You want to sue anybody? Yes, yes, sue everybody. Go on, sue yourself. Go on, go on. Ah. You get your money from cement, eh? My cement. Look at those. They mean just what you think they mean. Oh, Phyllis, forgive me. Jose, how could you take money from this, this, this what? You know what. Why, even the flowers you gave me. Keep you. them, keep them. They come from me in a roundabout way. Senor Dexter, your seconds will find me at the Hotel Ritz until tomorrow. Noon. My right hand with a knife in it. Oh, uh, it was Jose's birthday. And how many times was he born? Well, most of that was alone. I will pay back every cent at once. Can you? No. Oh, Jose, you're vile. You're, you're cheap. Cheap? Oh. oh, you'll get it back. You'll get everything back. Yeah, everything that's coming to you. Heaven help you. Stephen, darling, I won't be much use to you in the office. There are some things she did that I simply couldn't do. I'm not clever the way you are. A smooth liar can make a fool out of me. Go on, go on. Just two more words. You're pathetic. Now, I now, 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 that's... Calling, remember the face. Here, take your hands off her, you gold digger. You cannot talk to me like that, you white oh, people. Oh, no, no, really, no, you, you must stop it. Now, stop, stop it, Out of my it's way. Out of I, my way, too. Oh, so please take your hands oh, off Oh, mind your own business. This is my business. Who'll fight over you? Now, Kendall, that'll do. That is enough. Stop fighting and start Come here. on, come on, get out of here, the two of you. Did not think it would matter if I was empty with money, if I was full with love. Go on, go on. I'm going, I'm going. Stephen. What? Uh, don't forget to put Kelly in Kansas City. Six years. Huh? Six years I put up with her. Six long years she's bossed me and bullied me. Butting in here, butting in there. Pushing me this way, shoving me that way. I might have known that she'd do anything to get her own way. You know, I must be the biggest fool. You? Oh, no, me. Why, he isn't the first man I ever saw. He isn't the first man who ever made love to me. Well, I should have known from the very start that he was a phony. Honest men just don't make love that well. They, they haven't had enough practice. Six years, and, and every single day she'd do something frightful to me. Why, I've stood more from Kendall Browning than I, I'd stand from the woman that I love. He and his polo ponies and his parrots and his haciendas and, and his lime. Oh, <laughs> Feel us, my heart of hearts. We will walk through the wood, and wherever your sweet little feet touch the ground, flowers will grow. <sighs> flowers. <laughs> Show me in all history a more vicious woman. Truth, honor, decency, they mean nothing to her. I knew men were low, but not that low. She, she schemes, she, she lies, she cheats. Oh, but no more. No more at my expense. I'd like to, to strangle him. You know, I regard the day as being the luckiest day in my life. You should, too. Should I?
Don't try that again, buddy. Mind you, Kendall, I'm not giving in. That's my department. See this? It's a skirt. <laughs> Did you remember to put Kelly in Kansas City? Oh, Kendall, what am I going to do about you? 